What's good, sexies? So, it's your boy here, back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes, and we got this double special banner today. So, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to give you guys my rundown on each of the colors, and whether or not this is a good banner to snipe on if you're trying to pick something up. And in fact, should you even summon on this banner with the anniversary coming up in just a week or two? I don't know about that, but before we talk about all that, let's just break down the colors first. So on red, we have the Bride Shanna and we have the Summer Mercedes. Now, what's actually really cool about both of these units is that they have access to Far Trace. So if you're trying to get Far Trace on somebody, then... You're pretty much guaranteed to get it if you snipe red and you pull a 5-star. So that is very nice. Now, as far as Shanna goes, she has Rose Quartz Bow, which gives her attack up 3 and also 20% damage based on her speed and attack and speed up 6 if she initiates combat or is in two spaces of an ally. So it's a player phase weapon, but not a very impressive one, to be honest, by today's standards. So I'm not really too sold on this Shanna as a unit herself. But can't really argue with the fodder that she comes with. We got here Swift Sparrow 3, AD Far Trace 3, and Attack and Defense Rain 3. All of your flying units are just going to be salivating to get their paws on this Shanna's fodder skills. So she is a very powerful summon. Then we have the Summer Mercedes over here who has the Peachy Parfait Plus. It's going to grant attack or res up 5 to her. And inflict res minus 5 on the foe during combat. And then if the foe has a blue bonus to res, like from a rally skill or a tactic skill, she's going to steal their bonus essentially. She takes whatever stat bonus they have and then inflicts a penalty on them to basically neutralize their own bonus. So it's kind of like binding necklace except only targeting res there. Which is okay, but this is not one of the more impressive inheritable tomes. She also has attack and res push 4 and AR far trace, which is very good fodder. Especially for Reinhardt, for example, if you wanted to get far trace on him. This is definitely the one to give him. So, not too shabby of a fodder pull, but not really much of a unit to use herself. Alright, then on blue we have both of the 4 star demotes actually, which is really cool. This is one thing that I like about this banner a lot, is that... If you're trying to snipe colors and try to get a 5-star, you don't have to worry about getting pity broken by one of the demote options here, which is nice. So, the Summer Ogmo with his Trident Plus. He's going to gain attack up 6 as a blue bonus if he's in 3 spaces of an ally at the start of the turn. And in combat, he's going to gain attack and defense up 5 if he's in 3 spaces of an ally when he fights. Not really that great of a weapon, to be honest. I think... The one that Pirate Geese came with is just way better. <laughs> with Lull, Attack, and Defense 5, that's just so powerful. And there's also Spirited Spear as well, so... There's just so many better inheritable lances. I don't think you want to go for this one. But he does come with Attack and Speed Solo 3 and Threatened Speed and Defense 2. So he's not a bad pull for fodder if you're trying to get some better stuff. Like the Level 4 Attack and Speed Solo or Speed and Defense Menace, you'd be able to... Get those a lot easier by foddering this Ogma first. So he's okay as a summon. As far as merge project goes, I don't know if you want to use this guy. His res is just abysmal. So I think actually the Summer Norn that came out on the same banner as this guy is the superior option to go for if you wanted to merge someone to plus 10. So definitely save your orbs there. And then we have the Bride Juno with the Love Bouquet Plus. Essentially, it's just Joint Drive Attack and Joint Drive Res slapped onto its home. So, it's okay as a support option. Doesn't seem too bad for a unit like the Dancing Renea or the Bride Ninian. But otherwise, there's not really too much value to this, I would say. There's definitely better tomes out there. And there's also the Silver Goblet anyway. So, it's not like Renea and Bride Ninian were starved for a good support tome. And then for fodder, she's got attack and speed form 3 and aerobatics 3. Again, not really the best of fodder. Uh, definitely this Juno is the weakest unit on this banner for sure. Attack and speed form, uh, until we get a level 4 version of that, you don't really need this. And then aerobatics, <laughs> there's other units that have that. So definitely a big skip from Juno. Okay, now we get to the good stuff. So 
First up, our first duo hero on the banner is the Pirate Hinoka and Pirate Camilla. I think it's really good timing for them to release this unit again because we just got the Hatari Azura, who's able to refresh actions for this character with their harmonized skill. So that's a pretty good interaction. And I do think this Pirate Hinoka is one of the better beneficiaries of the harmon harmonized skill from that Azura. So her weapon, Mermaid Bow, is effective against flying and armor, grants attack up three, grants attack up six if her HP is over 25%. She does adaptive damage and she also gains a brave attack if she has more speed than the foe and she has weapon triangle advantage. So when I first saw this unit, <laughs> I was just like, dude, this, this is the ultimate brave Hector killer. And she absolutely is because there's no way Brave Hector is going to beat her. The current build that people like to run on him in Summoner Duels is Hardy Fighter, Aegis, and also Deflect Magic. So that's not going to cut it against this Hinoka. She has adaptive damage, so she's going to target his res. She has color advantage, so she gains bonus damage on him naturally and then also has a Brave Attack. And <laughs> this is really not much Hector can do to stop her. Deflect Magic is not going to work on her because she's physical. And then you could just give her Guard, in fact, instead of Far Trace. Even though I know the Trace skill is really good. But I would probably give her Guard so that she can lock Hector out of using Aegis more than once. And then once you hit him four times, that's it. <laughs> Hector is done with. And she could also be really strong as Bride Fiorm too with her... Or not Bride Fiorm, but Ascended Fiorm with her effective against armor and then... Like I said, if you were to give her guard, then she can lock Fiorm out of using Ice Mirror. So, a very good armor buster as far as save skill armored units go. And definitely a unit worth summoning for. I'm actually going to try my luck and toss a couple of orbs on this banner after I give my explanations and see if I can get her. But her duo skill is not bad either. She gets attack and speed up 6 to herself and flying allies in 3 rows and 3 columns. And they all also get one extra movement, which is nice. So, for example, a unit like A-Tree getting plus one movement is really nuts in player duels. And she also inflicts gravity on the opposing range units that are in three rows and three columns. Unless they're a flying type unit. So, their Yuris, their infantries, and their cavalries like Ninja Corins and Winter Lysithias and all of those guys, they're going to get hit by gravity on the turn you use this, assuming they're in the target range. So pretty powerful stuff. Definitely a nice little duo skill there. So a good unit to summon. All right, they are color sharing with this Lakche over here with her weapon, which does minus one special trigger. All stats up five, null follow up, and then also... If she has more speed than the foe, she nullifies guard. So she's trying to be a melee type of nuke, I guess you could say, with Frenzy trying to give her desperation and damage reduction so she can hit the foes twice in a row and the second hit is a Regnal Astra to the face. It's okay. I mean, it works, I guess, but I'm definitely more impressed by the Hatari Karla that we got on the other banner. Definitely a much better melee nuke type of unit, so... <laughs> Unfortunately, this Lakche is not holding up, but she is quite good for fodder though with Frenzy 3 and Joint Drive Attack. Gonna be a nice pickup for any of those Ninja Shamirs you guys were building, or Ninja Hana, or Ninja Zhark, or even Yenfei I think could make pretty good use of those skills. So a nice fodder pull regardless. And then finally on Colorless, we have the Duo Hilda and Marianne. This is actually like one of the most underrated units in the game, I would say, because I run this unit all the time in Aether Raid's offense. I think they are just a godsend to have on a save skill armor ball. So all you got to do is put them in front of all the enemies and then support them with two save skill armors. And then their support effect from their weapon is going to grant the passive breath effect, as well as attack up six to any of those save skill armored units when they come in to protect. And then also, if they're not adjacent to an ally, they get attack and speed up 6 during combat themselves. So it gives them a little bit of combat potential there, which is nice. They also are the only unit in the game that has even recovery right now. So if you want to get even recovery, you got to go through them. 
and they have Attack and Speed Push 4 and Dazzling Staff 3. All very good stuff. Their harmonized or their duo skill is it's okay. I actually do like using this in Aether Raids once you've gotten past the first couple of turns and you just need to inflict the attack minus 7 debuff on the foes and the isolation. It can come in handy for sure, but definitely the selling point to them, I would say, is their weapon and also even recovery. So a very powerful support option. And then the final unit on the banner is also the sexiest unit in the game. Don't at me on that. I I swear to God, dude, Summer Freya is just the sexiest character in Fire Emblem Heroes, and there is no denying it. She is just the best in terms of artwork. So her weapon here is really good. Let's see here. So she gets all stats of five. She gets speed-based damage reduction, so dodge. And then when she transforms, she gets null follow-up, and she also gets attack up two and inflicts attack and defense minus four on the foe and she gets the impact effect so <laughs> typical beast transformation for the cavalry beast units Th there's not really much else to say Th <laughs> this freya is really crazy the one thing though i will say i think i like a little bit better about the mythic freya is that she has distant counter built in so if you're doing the thing in player duels where you grant the effect where you have um, Brave or Legendary Elliewood on the team to grant bonus doubler. Freya, by the way, is also a beast unit, so that triggers Elliewood's Vision of Arcadia. You're going to be able to stat buff Freya like crazy, get her to all stats up 6, and just throw her in the opponent's face, and they can't really do much about it. Binding Necklace is so cheesy, especially when she has bonus doubler and she's just getting so many stats. It's really hard to deal with a plus 10 Freya when she has full support. But again, like I said, I think I like the other Freya having distant counter a little bit more than this one having null follow-up. Well, in that same regard, I guess the other Freya having distant counter is not able to have null follow-up unless you remove binding necklace, right? So maybe you just give this Freya distant counter in the A slot and it's fine. And then she has Null Follow-Up and Binding Necklace too. Okay, so I retract what I said just now. Maybe this Freya is actually better. And plus she's colorless too, so she doesn't really have any type weaknesses there. So yeah, Freya is nuts. Definitely a good unit. But I would say for sure green is in first place if you're trying to pull a unit to use. While colorless is in second place. And then red is really good if you're trying to get far trace. Blue is a big old skip, so stay away from blue. And now we're going to toss a couple of orbs here and see if I can get that pirate Hinoka. I'm not going to go too crazy on this because, like I said, Anniversary is coming up and I want to save. All right, Basilio is a good pull. I'll definitely take that. Would love to get that guy up to plus 10. I have 257 orbs. I might go for, like, 57. Go down to a neat 200 and see if we can pull this... Hinoka over here. All right, if you guys do decide to summon on the banner, let me know in the comments section down below. But like I said, I, this is definitely a big skip. We got anniversary coming up very soon, and whatever orbs you have are definitely going to be better suited to the craziness that we're going to get over there. But for me, though, like I said, I want to test out this unit with the Azura that we got from the Hatari banner, so... I am going to try to get him. Alright, so far not really having that much luck, but it is what it is. Can't really expect much when you're summoning on these banners. Especially if you don't have Fey Pass to guarantee the spark. So, we're just tossing darts on a board here. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. Okay, we didn't get either any green orbs to show up, so what do I go for? I, maybe colorless or red? What do I want more, huh? That's interesting. Uh, I guess we could go for colorless. Yeah, because even recovery is just so good. And then <laughs> I would really like to get that Freya just for, for culture purposes, if you guys know what I mean. But otherwise, <laughs> we're just going to be hitting green here for the most part. All right, we got Soren there. 
Man, seeing that Soren just like really reminds me that there's no duo Ike in the game yet. <laughs> like, what's the deal with that? How how is there no duo or harmonized Ike? I don't get it. He seems like one of the most brain dead options to give it to, right? Cause okay. <laughs> All right, we, we pulled Soren three in a row there. I, I don't know what's up with that, but... Yeah, like, why hasn't Ike gotten a duo or a harmonized yet? It just doesn't really make sense. And as for who I would pair with Ike, I guess... If it's going to be a duo, I would actually really like to see an Ike and Zelgius duo. I, I think that would be pretty badass to see them two together. Or if it's going to be a harmonized, then maybe... Huh. Like, what other character from another game would be a good pair with Ike? Maybe Jeric or another mercenary, I guess, like Priam or something would be pretty cool. Alright, we are going to hit Colorless, like I said. Alright, we, we get a freaking Tanya, okay. Tanya was just dead on arrival. She has never had a moment in the spotlight at all, so... Very unfortunate summon there. Alright, we got Natasha on that one. Whatever. I didn't mean to click on her there. Okay, we actually dipped below 200 orbs, so... Yeah, I, I guess we'll stop there. I, I don't really want to get killed on this banner with Anniversary coming up, so... <laughs> 13 summons, I gave it a good shot, but... Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. So, this is your boy Tacho signing out. Let me know in the comments section what you guys think of this banner and if you're going to summon... Definitely best of luck to you if you're going to try to get somebody. <laughs> but as you guys saw, I tried and I failed. So sucks for me, but what can you do? So anyways, I will catch you guys again on the flip side when we get the Mythic Reveal trailer for this month. So look forward to that. And that's all for now. So take care, guys.